Okay. For LSU will be Juan Tanzo from Mexico City. They play on natural turf here at Tiger Stadium. And it's a high and short kick. They kick it away from Carter. And it is taken by Greg Richardson on the near sideline. And he puts it down at the 21. So Walter Lewis will open up at quarterback. And he's already in the Alabama record books. Terry Good is only a freshman from Town Creek. He's not that big, but he is very quick. Now here's the horse. Ricky Moore, 235-pound hammer. Jesse Bendroth, uh, flanker, blazing speed. And little Joey Jones, who stands 5'9", weighs 165, plays it split in. Both those wide receivers are double trouble. For so Alabama, call it the 20. The ball is just over the 20 for the first half of the ball game. And they send Bendroth in motion. And they pitch it to Goode. And Goode, who weighs 170 pounds, is brought down by Greg Dubrock, an outside linebacker. Preston Gothard is the tight end, 6'4", 210. Gary Ockton is the tackle at 50 pounds. Second down and nine, and back goes Walter Lewis to throw. Whips it toward the sideline. The pass is good to Bendross, and Bendross sends it back up field, and he is just short of a first down at the 29. As LSU opens up with Kiddock, Barbe, Osborne, the down lineman, DeBrock, Birch, Chapman, Melanson are your linebackers. Alex Clark came today, but we had a granddaddy gully washer come through here yesterday afternoon. It just soaked everything, including Frank Roy. The handoff goes to the fullback board, cuts it over the right side, and Ricky, who is a bull of a man, gets it out to about the 32 and picks up an Alabama first down. And a very important first down for Alabama as we look at the Alabama's ratings offensively for the season. Sixth in total offense, fifth in scoring offense, 19th in rushing offense. Very potent being able to run and pass. Market closer to the 33 than the 32. LSU showing the five-man front right now with Balanza on the linebacker dropping off. They go quickly over the middle with it. And the pass is complete to the tight end, Preston Gothard. He's a junior out of Montgomery, and he picks up another Alabama first down as he gets the football beyond the 46. From behind the defense, watch Walter Lewis now. Fans, he was a drop, a wishbone quarterback. Watch him drop straight back, spot the tight end between the linebackers. Gothard, number 86, makes the reception for first down. And Ross and Jones wide. The option goes that way as Lewis comes off the snap with it, turning the ball that way. And he is thrown down right about midfield. Brought down by Roland Barbe, who is a big sophomore from Chalmette, Louisiana, 6'4", 250 pounds. And he's got a beard that he's grown and trimmed it. I called him Faust yesterday. He's a very dramatic-looking young man and a big horse when he puts the hard hat on and goes to work in the middle. Second down at about seven. Just short of midfield for Alabama. Right. And the ball is given away to the fullback Ricky Moore, who is a 235-pounder from Huntsville. And a penalty flag is thrown in the backfield of Alabama as they run by Moore, move the football down to about the 47 of LSU. The referee today is John Cook. Umpire is Harold Johnson. John Haney is the linesman. Haynes it is. Haynes. Uh, Ronnie Baines, the uh, line judge, field judge is John Fleming. The back judge is Charlie Horton. Penalty against Alabama, back so up, here's the call. We have holding, offense, we will repeat the down. Plus 10 yards. The LSU defense is not likely to do much rushing and blitzing against Walter Lewis because Walter is too good a runner, too dangerous. They'll try to defend most of the time. It's second down and right at 17 for Alabama as Bendross comes back toward the snap. Lewis drops straight back, looks for him, can't find him. Now Walter goes deep for him. He's trying to outrun the coverage. He can't do it. The ball ricochets away. Good coverage by number 29, Lippert Hobley. When Walter Lewis goes back to pass, the defense must control. On third and 17, Alabama's about 43% on third down conversion so far this year in their seven previous ball games. Lewis comes to the sideline, slips that ball out, and uh, there's not enough room. Pretty good turn upfield by Kerry Good, but uh, Kerry can't get 
past the 49 of LSU, and that will bring the Alabama kicking team on. So the Tiger defense forces Alabama to the punt in the first possession. There's Kerry Good, who's just a freshman, started the, the Tennessee ball game and had 124 yards total offense, has been in the lineup since. Malcolm Simmons comes in to punt, averaging right at 42 yards per kick. Senior pre-match student, left puts it out of there. Eric Martin is deep for, no, it's Norman Jefferson deep for LSU. Ball takes an LSU bounce and goes on into the end zone, a 49-yard punt. So the Tigers will have their first possession out at their own 20 with no score in the first. LSU comes up for its first snap of the ball game with Jeff Wickersham set up at the quarterback spot. He's going to put it up in a hurry and whips it down the field and passes. Get to Martin, and it's a foot race. Eric Martin, the track speedster, is away on his way. 80-yard touchdown. For LSU, leading 7 to nothing at 11.08 to play in the first quarter. This time he hits it deeper. And it is taken by Richardson, and he steps out of bounds at the five. He hit the chalk at the five. He had fair caught the first kickoff because it was high and short. They didn't want Carter to get a hold of it, so they kicked it back to Richardson again, and the youngster hit the sidelines right on put Alabama right in the hole. That's the longest touchdown pass of the season for LSU. On the previous one was 18 yards. That one went for 80. Here comes Kerry Good, and he turns it up to the eight-yard line. He picks up three. Ray Perkins right there. Ray is, was a great football player at Alabama, coached in the professional ball after a career. Seems to be and comes across as a little bit tough and uh, withdrawn, but his players tell me that he is really a warm-hearted, compassionate person, and they love him very much. Ben Bross and Jones go wide now as Alabama sets up second down and seven from their own eight. And off to Moore, the fullback, the big guy runs it right up the middle and gets the first down as he crosses the 15. Eric Kiddock, Jr. out of River Ridge, brought him down. Coming up later today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the World Gymnastics Championship 20. Rebuilding team this year. And he's watching anxiously now as Alabama goes to the attack and Lewis will put it up from his 15, whips it out here and it's almost intercepted. Intended for Pendross and almost picked off by Alex Clark. Clark is a senior out of Lake Charles. Played a lot of different positions. He's a wise fellow back there. And he almost had a second touchdown for LSU. When the de defensive back gets a good read on the quarterback, as Clark did, he anticipated the flat pass and came up and he could have held the ball. It would have been another six points for LSU. Second down and ten for the Tide. Three six-man front now. Now they'll drop one back into the short area. The middle with Ricky Moore, the fullback. Out across the 20, near the 21. They'll be looking at third down and a good five, five and a half. LSU continues to use the strategy that we expected, playing soft on defense, trying to contain the speed of the Alabama football team, not let the quarterback get outside on either option play or the scramble. Well, Alabama didn't do much for three quarters against Penn State, let the Lions get out to a big lead, and they held on to beat them. They got into a scoring bout with Tennessee and lost that one. And here's Lewis back on third down and five. He's got to go short with it to Pendross, and Pendross is really level. I mean, he is leveled right on the 25, and he is short of the first down. Radell Melanson hit him, a 220-pound outside linebacker. Yes, Pendross has had a fine year of senior, 18 receptions this year, but he's going to got to wish he hadn't caught this one. Catching the ball across the middle, you know someone coming from 180 degrees is going to hit you, and that's exactly what happened. Number 99, Melanson. Just an outstanding defensive play by Randall Melanson. Norman Jefferson drops for LSU as Malcolm Simmons comes in. His first kick today was good for 49 yards. There is no pressure on him. He's got another good one hanging up there. It's a tail dragger and takes an Alabama roll, and it's going to roll inside the 30 and dead down around the 26 of LSU job a good deal of the time with Junius Durrell. On first down from the 26, the pick comes back to Gary James, the figure of the tailbacks, and James will get a yard, maybe two, as they pound him out of bounds up around the 28. Up front, it's Mitch Andrews that tied it. And it's second down and eight for LSU as they send James in motion. 
give the ball to Gene Lang, the fullback. Lang is the former tailback, and running in traffic can be particularly troublesome because he is so elusive. That time he wiggled around and picked up about four yards. And Rodriguez, Edwards, Bennett, King, Davis, and McCray are your big guys up front, down linemen and linebackers. And here's the secondary that was burned. Gay, Hood, Thomas, and Cooper. It's a young group. He, uh, both Thomas and, and Cooper are freshmen playing at, at the safety position for Alabama. Third down and four for LSU. And Wickersham gets it in the air, and the pass is incomplete. It was a little too high. If he'd had it just a little shorter, I think his tight end, Andrews, might have come down with it. So it'll bring up the first punt of the afternoon for... In fact, Alabama is starting five true freshmen on defense. Quite a young team. Kick is away. It's low and possibly a return chance for Richardson. Nope. He runs out of real estate rather quickly. Good coverage downfield by LSU. It's a 48-yard punt, and uh, Walden Cager is the man down. And Lenny Patrick, the 185-pound senior from Jasper, Alabama, checks in at a running back spot for the Tide. They go to work first down from their own 29, Walter Lewis. Down the line goes to Patrick, and Patrick is met outside by number 29, free safety, Lifford Hobley. It is the free safety's job on that uh, strong side over there to come up and pick up that outside man because the strong safety had to get involved with a tight end and he did a good job of it. Hobley is an excellent tackler. He's a senior, one of the best safety men in the Southeastern Conference, filling the gap on the option play beautifully. Gain on the play of approximately four, second down six, and Lewis looks up, reads pass, gives it off to Moore. Moore is pounded in the middle. Hit hard, now it's Patrick rather, and he is belted as he started poking around in the middle by Clarence Osborne, 95. Clarence Osborne is a redshirt freshman, but what potential the young man has. He's six foot five, weighs 240, and runs a 4'7'40. I think he's going to be an outstanding player in time. Well, he lost the yard on the play, going to second down and seven. The ball is back near the uh, third down and seven, back near the 31. Lewis on a deep drop, goes down the middle with it. The pass is just too long, intended for Kerry Good coming out of the backfield. He chipped it over into a flanker spot and was just simply running a fly pattern down the middle of the field, headed for the goal post, and the pass was too long. Well, Simmons now in for his third punt of the afternoon. He has hit a pair of 49ers on the day, and whoa, that is a dandy. Norman Jefferson way back to the 15, to the 14, now gets a little help. Comes back to the 25 and up near the 30, and a penalty flag is thrown. Yesterday, I asked LSU coach Jerry Stovall how he figured to attack Alabama. Well, 162 yards a game, so uh, offensively, we have to do two things. Keep the football and move it so we can put points on the board. We keep the football and move it so we can keep their offense off the field. Walter Lewis is, uh, without a doubt, the key that makes the, their whole operation work. Well, that's strategy paid off in their first snap went for 80 yards now they get nailed with a clipping call and they're backed up to their 15 with Craig Rathigen and Dalton Hilliard in the lineup for the first time today and Hilliard who is LSU's leading runner but he got hurt in that opening game against Florida State and he's been hobblesome ever since but LSU last year Frank averaged uh, almost five yards per carry on the ground and this year they're doing no better than three and a half well, LSU's made a change in, in the offensive line uh, for this ball game. They put Harold and Gore in there trying to throw up their blocking for the running game. That play picked up three, second down and seven from the 18 of the Tigers. Gerald is in there at a wide spot. Wickersham faked it, rolled it out, delivers it downfield. His tight end was absolutely wide open. Mitch Andrews was lonesome. He was so wide open, but the pass was thrown just a little bit too high. Mitch couldn't get up to get it. What do, you, what do you do with a team that uh, plays five freshmen? Well, the defensive coaches, as we look at the top ten and the opponents today, we'll continue on that about the freshmen. Keith said, when you play freshmen, one thing about uh, that uh, age youngster is they're not consistent, so you try to be very simple. This is not a typical Alabama defensive football team. Use a lot of stuff. Hey, very basic. It is now third down and a long seven for LSU as Wickersham drops, gets some pressure, runs away from it, pulls it down, gets one block up the sideline and dances out of bounds across the 25 and the young sophomore from Merritt Island, Florida picks himself a first down. 
one thing about the LSU receivers, they like the block. They take pride in their blocking, and that, that's good for their running game. And you're going to see Martin, number 41, go down for the pass. Once he recognizes that Wickersham's going to run the ball, what does he do? He comes back and gets involved in the play. He makes the key block, cutting down the defensive back gate, allowing the quarterback to make a good run. At the 26, first down for LSU. Ball goes to Hilliard. And Hilliard goes around, finds a hole, and lashes to the 37, close to the 38. That could be another first down. Just depends on where they spot him. He gives Hilliard enough running room, give him the time to pick his hole. He can stay up with any ball carrier in America. There are his numbers for this year. As Keith has already mentioned, that's about half what he had at this time last year. Been injured since the first ball game, off and on, not completely healthy. He picked up the first down. The ball is sitting on the LSU 37. Tigers leading 7 to nothing, and Rathjen, the fullback. Nothing fancy about it. Craig just rumbles along. He's a red shirt freshman out of Houston, Texas. Ball is across the 40, so give him four yards on the carry. Second down and seven. The, the freshmen that are starting for Alabama, one defensive end, one nose guard, one outside linebacker, and two safeties. True freshmen. They were in high school playing at this time last season. Well, it's second down, six. And it's Hilliard again. He's looked outside, cut it back inside, and that last effort gets him another first down. That last puke was something else, man. He was in there for about a two-yard gain, saw a little room, cut back, watch the running of Hilliard number 21. This is why you have to control the line of scrimmage. You let Hilliard, a good runner, get a little daylight. Now watch right here. Boom, he goes right by and makes the first down. LSU's won the ball seven times, and five different people have carried it. But once Hilliard's in there, and he looks like he's feeling pretty good today, all the joints are working. Uh, they'll just keep giving it to him because he will find a way. Both wide receivers like the block. And Herman Fontenot, number 40, was also a tailback. When Hilliard came on the scene, they moved him to end. But in a team with a team that likes to run the football, the receivers have to be blocked. They have to like to do it. Good shoulder roll block with that shoulder getting the outside leg. Good effort. Second down, about five and a half for LSU. That's Hilliard in motion. Ball goes to the pullback and nothing there. This time, number 96, Randy Edwards, big defensive tackle from Marietta, Georgia, steps in and stops him for Alabama. So they'll be looking at third down and short. Randy Edwards is a three-year starter. He is one that provides the leadership for that young defensive team. Made an excellent play, standing home, whipping the blocker, and then finally releasing and making the tackle. Third and four for LSU. The ball is just short of the Alabama 46. It'll be interesting to see if Alabama will turn to the blitz if LSU continues to move the ball. Ricochet is caught by number 31. Pulled down by Mike Rodriguez, the nose guard, who slid off the block, looped around, and brought him down for a loss. And it brings up fourth down. Rodriguez, number 31, is going to beat the center. Campbell left him come to the wrong. Campbell had his head on the wrong side. He should have led the block over to the defensive man's right side, and Wickersham had no chance as Rodriguez comes right through for the play. Clay Parker's in the punt, second kick of the day. First one was good for 48. Richardson deep for Alabama. Blocked. It is knocked down and blocked by Cornelius Bennett. Picked up by Cornelius Bennett, and he scores a touchdown. A freshman that Frank was talking about, an outside linebacker. There he is, number 97, six foot four, 220 pounds freshman, runs a 4540. The coaches tell me that he's going to be a dominant football player before too long, and he may have already reached that level as a sensational play. The extra point kick by Van Tippen, another freshman from Red Bay, Alabama, is good, and so they have come up with big plays on both sides of the ball to tie it up at 7-7. You can see coming from the bottom of your screen the great effort reaching out, getting the kicker and the ball. You remember that if the 
If the uh, defense gets any part of the ball, the kicker loses his protection. It's the first LSU block punt this year. A play to remember for Cornelius Bennett. Chevrolet is taking charge with a new high-output Camaro C28 and enough new magic to take its 2 plus 2 performance into another world. The magic of five powerful leaders. The magic of a new higher lift cam and super-tuned ignition that did a test track 0 to 55 in a quick six seconds. The magic of improved suspension. Suspension that delivers remarkable new handling. The magic of sure-footed braking that's almost extraterrestrial. Camaro, more beauty and a lot more beast. Gymnastics star Zettel is shooting Julianne McNamara and Kathy Johnson in the last World Championships before the Olympics. To kick it off. Norman Jefferson is back deep along with Herman Fontenot and it's Fontenot with a ball. Wide receiver and he finds a hole. And he slips and falls when he was trying to make his cut. He might have been still running if he had not lost his footing. They had a heavy rain here yesterday, and they did not get the tarp down until after the rain had passed over. From the right of your screen, watch Cornelius Bennett. A little bit of a bad snap, which slows Parker, the kicker, down. Now, Bennett, the presence of mind, fans, is fantastic here because the ball is on the ground, and he normally would fall on it and pick it up. But watch his presence of mind. He gets up, he can run with it, and he scores. Ricochet back sets up a deep drop. The pass is thrown to Gene Lang, the fullback, setting up a screen. Lang also runs into a little soft turf up around the 40 and cannot cut back to the inside where he wanted to go. But they get good yardage out of the play, moving it from the 35 up to about the 43. Here's the young man that blocked the punt, number 97. He's one of the pure freshmen. I repeat, that was playing in high school at this time last year. But the coaches say it's going to be one of the most dominant defensive football players they've had in a long time. Out of Inslee in Birmingham. Second down and two. They fly four in the middle, and they get it in the middle as James, Gary James, wedged in between a defender and two blockers and popped it out of there and moved it down to the Alabama 45. Well, the LSU uh, running game looks to me like, Frank, it's got a chance to be fairly potent today. This is their game plan. They substituted two men, Gore and Harrell. They took out uh, uh, they took out uh, Barry and Langford, I believe. No, Fordham. And Fordham, that's right, to try to show up that running, feeling that Alabama with freshmen, they might get to run some yardage. Lang in the middle on the first down play, moves from the 45 to the 42 to pick up three. NCAA football here on ABC next Saturday. Two games to announce for you today, and that one at the top is something. That will be probably, could be, let's say, for the, in fact, almost, almost sure it will be, for a chair of the conference championship, Auburn and Georgia. And LSU now trying to stay with James and getting outside. Alabama will have none of it this time, and uh, Mr. Bennett, Cornelius Bennett, was one of those involved in the play. One thing that Alabama continues to do is be very basic on defense. So unfamiliar to Alabama fans because Ken Donahue, their defensive coordinator, always wanted to stunt and blitz. Young people, you take a risk, make mistakes during that, so they're being very basic. Showing a four-man front right now on third down and eight. And Ricochet back. Goes down the middle with it. Martin, same play, they scored a touchdown on. And they're inside the 15, down to the 13 of Alabama. That's the same play. Martin is going down and break in in front of the underneath cover. He finds a natural hole, and he has that ability. Watch him turn it on. Where's the Alabama secondary? They're playing very cautious. Young and inexperienced, that's what young they do, play cautious. After one quarter, it's all even at 7-7. Thank you, Tim Brent. 
LSU sitting with the ball now, just inside the Alabama 14. First down, Jerry James cuts it over the right side, takes it close to the 10. Pretty good defensive effort there by Scott McCray to turn the ball carrier away from the goal line. Here are the stats for the first quarter. You can see that LSU is way out in front on the strength of their 80-yard touchdown pass to Eric Martin, and now in this possession, they've moved down and threatening again. Alabama averaging 462 per game is way behind in their production. Ball well, just short of the 10, second down, about seven. Inside, beautiful fake, a fumble by Wickersham as he falls down on the tackle, and the ball comes loose, and Alabama comes up with it. Wickersham on a beautiful fake into the middle had the Alabama defense fooled but as he turned around the ball being loosely carried and Emmanuel King popped it loose from him and all of a sudden a great opportunity for LSU is gone a glimmering. Ma Emmanuel King number 92 is the leading defensive player you can see that's a contact uh, fumble the one thing Keith that I've always worried about is to it. And Alabama takes over on the turnover at their own seven. First down and Walter Lewis hands the ball off. That goes inside with Ricky Moore. And Moore is knocked down about the eight. Emmanuel King, number 92, is the one that made this key play. Let's watch him, how he comes into the, into the action. You can see he drops back for the pass, number 92. Now looks to size on 6'3", 230. And he puts the head gear right on the back of Ricky Sam. The ball pops right out. Hood, 43 recovery. Second down and eight from the nine. Lewis rolls it out. Gets it upfield. The pass is complete to the tight end, Thornton Chandler. And it's an Alabama first down across the 25 to the 27. Chandler, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Big target, 6'6", 240. This is the first time that we've seen Walter Lewis get out of the pocket. He does it with a bootleg effect. and. I don't think any LSU player neglected their assignment. I think it was just a good ex ex execution by Lewis. So the tide gets off the hook for the moment. With the first down at the 27. Lewis back. Goes down the sidelines for Jerry Jones. The pass is too high. Overthrown. Eugene Daniel over covering, but Jones is not that big. He's 5'9", 165. Coming up on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York... The Heisman Trophy winner from Oklahoma. Double wide, bottom of the picture for Alabama. On second down and 10, Lewis keeping it, keeping it. And he's slipped out. They bring him down short of the line of scrimmage, back around the original line of scrimmage. So they're looking at third and about 10. Sean Burke's over there, but Lewis, as much as anything, lost his footing. It's, it's very wet and soggy right in that area between, on this near side, between the 20 and 35. LSU defense had good pursuit up and down the line on the option play. Lewis really had nowhere to go. Slip back, third and 10. That's Patrick and Moore. No pressure. Ball is tipped. Pass intended for Moore coming out of the backfield. It was deflected as it crossed the line of scrimmage, and it brings up fourth down. LSU's defense are disguising their coverage, faking a blitz. Lewis drops straight back. He's going to try to get the ball out very quickly to the fullback, but it is deflected and goes incomplete. Big Roland Barbe, 6'4", 250, nose guard, slapped it down. Barbe is the leading tackler for LSU, something you can seldom see out of the middle guard. Now, as Malcolm Simmons has had three kicks, all of them for 49 yards, and this one takes an Alabama roll, getting a, it was kicked to the sidelines, and there was no way Jefferson could get to it. So this one goes for 54 yards with the roll, and out of bounds at the LSU 18. Now LSU will come back to the attack. First down, ball is uh, at the 18. They had it down inside the 10, and Wickersham fumbled it away. He rolls it out on a bootleg, pulls it down. A little confidence builder here. Jeff Decided, well, the last time I dropped it, let's find out how tough I am. He tucks this one away and runs for a first down up to the 30. When I asked the Alabama coaches why so many freshmen playing right now, late in the season, their comment was we were playing with experienced players that could run. We've gone with inexperienced players that can run, meaning defense is movement and active people make good defensive players. 
Wickersham's run makes it first down at the 30 as Durrell goes in motion. Top of your picture, give it to Dalton Hilliard. And Dalton couldn't quite turn it back to the left side. He wanted to come back to the left, but uh, Tom McCrary shut him down. Some of the game's underway now. Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions playing Joe's alma mater Brown and leading. And Missouri out to a 3 0 lead of Oklahoma. That's down in Columbia, and it's going to Columbia and trying to win. It's kind of like coming to LSU and trying to win. It's tough. Second down and nine from the 31. A little delay up the middle for Gene Lang, the fullback, to the 35. So they're going to be looking now at third down and five. Jeff Wickersham, the young sophomore quarterback from LSU, has had a fine sophomore year, but you just can't speed up the process of training a quarterback. It takes time to have been there a number of times before you can execute in a very difficult situation. Straight back. Now he has time, and it is incomplete, intended for Lang. You know what? He had a couple of people open. Number 41, Eric Martin, was wide open downfield, but Jeff just didn't have time to see him and pick him up. He, he did a good job of escaping the rush to get the pass off, and it wasn't his fault that it wasn't complete. It was right on the target. Pulled back Lang just couldn't hold it. Parker is in the front now. He's a three-stepper. Last time, remember, they blocked it. No pressure on him this time. He gets a good kick out of there, and Richardson drops back to his 24, 23, 22. And heads up the sideline to about the 32. Chinese men beat the Soviet men. It's uh, and a, a lot of. I'm amazed at how many tens are being scored in the international gymnastics competition these days. It's just astounding. That's from Budapest today on ABC. Wide hill of four to five. Pass is thrown to the short man. Tight end Preston Gothard, and he falls down up around the 40. Walter Lewis throwing in the pocket. He's showing good discipline, waiting for his receivers to get open as LSU is only rushing four people trying to cover the receivers with their linebackers and backs. Second down and two. Short two, just short of the 40. In the second quarter of play, a 7-7 ball game. Lewis play action pass goes down the pipe. It's complete to Bendross. He's got Jones out to help him. Jones makes the block and almost made the block. Bendross is pulled out at the seven. Joey got the man down for a moment, but Eugene Daniel got up and grabbed the hind leg of Bendross as he went by. Play action pass off of the option play. Watch this throw. It's a sensational throw as Bendross goes high in the air, catches it. The two, receive, two defenders back run into each other. Jones is blocking Daniel. Daniel gets up off the ground and prevents the touchdown. 53 yard reception. That's a good play by Daniel. Bendross has had a fine career. Six foot three, excellent speed. You can see the two LSU receivers were behind, I'm excuse me, defensive backs were behind him and couldn't make the play. First down goal, Alabama, Tiger seven. Ball goes to Lenny Patrick to the five, and there he is, Wallop. Number 77, Barbe. I think Chapman was in to get a piece of the action as well. And Barbe, the nose guard, gets out on the play, on the sweet play, with uh, Patrick carrying the ball, he's made some kind of effort. You look for those guards like that that can make those type of plays. Here's Jones, the Joy Jones, the wide receiver on the last play, but going back to the long pass, trying to block Daniel. He makes a good block, but Daniel, just a great football player, jumps right up a senior and makes the play. Tackling Dendron. Second down and goal from the five. It is Patrick. Maybe the four. The way Barbe and, and his pals in the middle of the LSU uh, defensive front have been playing so far in this first half with eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. I don't know if Alabama's going to run for a whole lot of yards up the pipe. Do you? I do not, and I, I am very, very somewhat surprised because the LSU defense has not been that good all season long. But they are playing with a, a tremendous effort right now. 
Moore and Good now are in the backfield, and Moore goes in motion. And Lewis will put it up. Walter is away with it. Touchdown. My goodness, you want to talk about senior football player? Man, with all the confidence in the world, he just kept on waiting and waiting and waiting, and all of a sudden, with the defender bearing down on him, he let it go into the end zone to Moore for a touchdown. Alabama's had great football players, but none have gained 5,000 yards with a football. Here, Walter Lewis shows his running ability, his scrambling ability, and his presence of mind. This is a fine throw. Moore standing in back of the end zone, end zone with hands up, for the touchdown. Alabama takes the lead with Tippett in for the extra point, and it is good. He is now 32 out of 32 on extra points. That freshman from Red Bay. 8.02 to go first half, and Alabama leads. Here's Terry Sanders kicking off. It's a high, deep kick. The wind's about 10 miles an hour, so it's not a particular factor on this cloudy, overcast day, and the kick is beyond the end line, and they'll come back to the 20 for a first down. Georgia is playing Florida today. Georgia undefeated in conference play. Florida with one loss. Alabama has a conference loss. Auburn is playing Maryland today. And uh, the Tigers are undefeated in the Southeastern Conference and will play Georgia next Saturday and we'll have that game for you. That could be for at least a piece of the conference championship, if not all of it. Then the possible Sugar Bowl spot. Going to be played down in Athens between the heads. Mm -hmm. Here goes James in motion. Wickersham from the 20. Runs out of the pocket, and he is sacked. Back on the 14, back on the 13. Number 95, Kurt Jarvis, a freshman from Gardendale, Alabama, a nose guard, 6'2", 270. And he is also a freshman, and is going to be one dominant football player. Number 95, he weighs 260 pounds. His effort uh, and quickness and speed, the combination is just ideal for a nose guard, number 95. Second sack of the ball game of Wickersham. The ball is put on the 14. Where it is second down and 16. <laughs> Wickersham's going to put it up again. Throws a bullet down the middle. He tried to force one. He tried to rip it between two defenders and get it to his tight end, Mitch Andrews. And the pass is incomplete. There are the numbers for Walter Lewis playing in a new offense. Uh, I agree with uh, Ray Perkins. I, I question whether this young man could change from a wishbone quarterback to a pro-style offense entirely different, but he's been nothing short of sensation. Montano comes in with a play now for Wickersham on third down and 16. Tigers need to pick up a first down, otherwise Alabama's going to get that football back in good field position. Again, they've got Gary James going in motion, which puts three wide people over on the near side. Wickersham looks that way. Alabama starts his and they've got it. They bring him down. The ball comes wiggling loose back inside the five, but they're going to call him down around the four. And Once number 95 was the man that came roaring in there to mess things up on him. Kurt Wickersham is just rushing three men. Uh, Alabama is just rush rushing three men. And uh, they did a good job of covering. Let's see if what the officials saw to make this not a fumble. His knee is down right He's there. Down. He's down. His knee is down while he has possession of the football. Brent Sowell, number 79, a tackle that looped from the outside. It was Sowell that chased him over and made the tackle. And now here's the punt by Parker out of the end zone, and it's a beauty. It is a beauty, but still Alabama's going to have it well upfield as Richardson takes it at the 46 and gets around the corner. LSU man slipped and fell down. And it was worth another 15 yards to Greg Richardson. A 50-yard punt by Parker, but a fine return. And an LSU player is hurt on the field. Another look at the return. Now, you'll see an LSU man over on this left-hand side with a chance to bring him down right here. Now, watch number 19. He's going to lose his footing right there. Clark loses his footing, and uh, Richardson turns it on. There are a lot of white shirts over there helping and getting in position to make the block. Tommy Howard is the LSU player hurt on the field, so you've got a timeout taken for him. the Alabama punt return team. And that's where Walter Lewis will put him in motion. With Moore and the Good. Now Good goes in motion for the time. And Lewis rolls it out, and looks, and throws, and he's got Bendross 
Jesse can't reach back for it. The pass was thrown behind him. He was available. As a matter of fact, he was wide open. <laughs> I was going to say, what does available mean except wide open? Ben Draws goes in and out. LSU's in a defense that could not cover it if they wanted to. You can see how wide open he is. The ball is a little bit behind, throwing on the run. Ben Draws gets his feet, I believe, uh, tangled up a little bit, and the ball goes incomplete. Lewis is now 7 out of 13 for 109 yards and a touchdown. It's second down and 10 at the LSU 33. Give it a good. And he's down to about the 30. Picked up three on the play, running behind the left side of uh, Horton and Adcock. You look at the LSU staff trying to make some adjustments to stop the passing of Walter Lewis and as Ray Perkins. As we see on his shirt is the Bear Brown pound tooth hat on the left of his collar that is wearing Sonoma Bear. All the players have a little detail on their helmets as well in memory of Paul. Pass thrown down the middle, incomplete, intended for Kerry Good, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now let's see if we get a kick here. I think we might. Van Tiffin, a walk-on. His dad, who's a big Alabama fan, kind of talked him into going to Alabama. And uh, he had some scholarship offers from Southern Miss and Tulane, but he went over to Bama despite the fact that he was not recruited, and he won the job. It should be mentioned that he's got some wind uh, helping him, too. About 10 miles an hour worth, 47-yard kick try, and it is no good. Hooked it out. So Tiffin misses from 47. And LSU will get the ball back with 5.25 to play. First down, just outside the 30 for LSU. Wickersham gives the ball to Dalton Hilliard. And Emmanuel King pops him, knocks him off balance, and Dalton falls ahead for two yards. Here's the hat that we're talking about in honor of uh, the late Bear Bryant. The famous hat that we saw him wear at every football game that I can remember, except one, Keith and Sugar Bowl, I think. Inside, he said, I don't, men don't wear hats inside. He Mama took just, it off. Mama told me not to wear my hat in the house. I think that's what he said. What a legend he is. Second down and eight. Ricochet's pass, got a man, it's good. Making the catch and tumbling out of bounds, Junius Durrell, first down LSU at their 46. Wickersham shows good poise. Let the defense uh, get spread. The receiver spread the defense all the way. He's got plenty of time. And finally, he sees Durrell all the way over on the boundary. That's a tough, long throw. Look how long it is in the air. Uh, now, Durrell catches it, controls it, and falls in bounds. Close to 40 yards in the air. Hilliard trying to find a little daylight. Crosses midfield, gets to the Alabama 49. And that'll be a pickup of close to five for Dalton Hilliard. That last completion was very important for Wickersham. He'd had some tough luck. He'd been sacked. He'd thrown for uh, some incomplete passes. He needed something to build his confidence, and he drilled it all the way across the field. There's his numbers, four for eight, 131. 80-yard touchdown pass, first play of the game. He's now picked up 1,791 yards this season. That's the second best in the history of the school. Here's a little looper downfield to the tight end. He can't hold on. Mitch Andrews has had a lot of almost so far today. But that little bootleg action now, Frank, this is the third time in the ball game that the LSU has used it, and every time they've had somebody available. Here's Tim Brent for a moment. On that last kickoff, Keith, you mentioned that Tommy Howard was injured. They have put a splint on his left leg. It is his knee. It is a knee injury. He will not play the rest of the day. They are now getting ready to carry him out of the stadium. He is in pain. Again, it is a knee injury. Oh, dear. That's too bad. Youngster, freshman. Third down. Let's call this four. The ball is closer to midfield. And Wickersham on third down will go to the air with it. Goes over the middle. Martin. Eric Martin is one of those wide receivers who doesn't mind going into the middle and taking the abuse that goes with it because, as Frank noted, he is a former running back. Watch the soft hand of Martin. Outstanding receiver. Watch him catch the ball, ease it in, knowing he's going to get hit. He just cradled that ball in right there for the first down. Good execution by Wickersham. Good poise on his part. 
Ball near the Alabama 38. First down for the Tigers. Three minutes and 50 seconds to play. First half. Sideline pattern is good to Doral. Did he go out? Yes, he did. He went out on the 25. He's got a first down, however. He was pretty close to being long gone. But you know who was downfield and made the final hit on him? Cornelius Bennett. Wesley Sand is going to throw the ball all the way across the field. Coaches say that you can throw the deep out all the way across the field. You've got some kind of arm. There's probably no, no more than 10 receivers and a, a quarterback in America can do that in college football. First down LSU, Alabama 25. They give it to Gene Lang, and Lang is whipsawed at about the 23, picked up two. Well, they got to try to get it on down here and get something on the scoreboard. They were down, uh, Wickersham fumbled the ball away on the seven when it looked like LSU was going to go for their second touchdown. At that time, it would have given them a 14 to seven lead, but now Alabama holds that posture with three minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. This, this uh, stat is a little deceptive. He needs 17 yards for a seasonal to become the seasonal pass from Houston. Ricochet puts it in the air over the middle. Great catch by Hayer. Great catch by Dalton. He's five foot eight, and he stretched out to about six two to get that. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. The, the pass is low into the outside. No batter would have swung at this pitch. But uh, Wickersham slips just a little bit and finally throws the ball down low and outside. Look at the leaping catch by Dalton Higgins. What and it's another first is. down for LSU. The ball is near the Alabama 12. Plenty of time left on the clock. 2.46. Fumble. Alabama recovers it. Wickersham fumbled the football on the exchange at center, and Cornelius Bennett recovers it. Boy, that'll take some wind out of your balloon in a hurry. They, that's twice now. They've been knocking on the door, and Wickersham has fumbled it. And the tide takes over at their own 13, leading 14-7 and now 2.43 to play in the first half. Boy, they stick in the end zone here. It will mean a lot. Here comes Terry Goods, and he's up. Fumbled the football himself. He fumbled it, Keith. I don't know who got it. Alabama, the call is Alabama retained it. I think it was Ben Ross in the bottom of the stack. Jesse got it. Oh, he was right on the spot. It would have been LSU's ball. Let's see if we can detect what causes the fumble. Good, just a freshman running on this part of the field. Protect that football. Going through traffic. He does, but the ball is going to pop out just at the last minute. There it is right there. Ben draws, bounces right up to it, Keith. Mm. That's lucky. They go back to Good, give it to the freshman, and uh, he bolts up the middle and gets what appears to be a first down for the Tide, just short of the 25. And there's the time remaining in the first half. Alabama's offensive line got some, a good surge on the last two snaps. That's the key for, for a good back to be able to pick his hole, get the momentum, make his cut in the defensive line of scrimmage, not in his own backfield. From the 24, they've got the first. Play action, Lewis getting some pressure, gets it up, he got him. Good play by 73, Eric Kiddock. He almost slipped away from him, but Kiddock got him. Unless you had three timeouts, I believe I'd use them right now. Coming up at halftime, some more on Marcus Dupree, and I would imagine they'll start spending them after this snap. It's second down, 16, Alabama. Back on their own 18. Give it in the middle, and there's a big hit on Ricky Moore by Henry Thomas. Henry Thomas listed as a nose guard along the defensive front. Now LSU calls a timeout to stop the clock, and you've got 56 seconds left to play. North Carolina losing its first last week, playing Clemson today. Having Maryland and Clemson back to back is not a gimme. Boston College with a win over Penn State last week, playing Army today and out to a 6 0 lead. And Wake Forest leading Duke with Lafayette leading Princeton in the second quarter of play. Been a hard year for Yale, hasn't it? Carmen Cosa and, uh, the, the, and the Bulldogs, long season for them. And Maxie Vaughn up at Cornell hasn't had a whole lot of laughs either. The ball is right near the 15-yard line. Line up now. With more at fullback. 
Good at tailback. And Lewis pitches it outside to the freshman running back, looking for the sidelines of the Tigers have got him. Short of the first down. Picked up some yardage on the play. Lewis delivering the ball just as he was hit. But it worked out for him, and they get a little bit of room now from Alfred Simmons. One thing that coaches are in agreement, it's hard to be a, an option quarterback and a drop back pass uh, combined. Walter Lewis gives Alabama both of these strong uh, offensive maneuvers. 349 yard punts and 154 yard punt by Malcolm Simmons. And Jefferson drops back now for LSU. Return, return. It's a low kick and not all that long, and it's going to bounce around and take an LSU bounce this time. And Alabama will kill it at the 47. So now let's see. They've got 36 seconds to play in the first half. They've got two timeouts remaining. That was a 29 yard punt. So the Tigers are going to try to hurry here and get it down. They've, the Conzos has pretty good range for them. Fontenot, 40, is a wide man. He's at the top of the picture, and Eric Martin's at the bottom of the picture, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him looking for Martin right here. Eric dragging it across the middle. That's where they go with it. He's got it, and he is thrown down at the Alabama 49, and LSU will have to kill the clock with a timeout and 28 seconds to play in the first half. Frank, as long as uh, this is not the time nor the circumstance, perhaps, but every time Martin drags across that middle, looks to me like he's been open. He was open in front of the linebackers. Alabama was defending this time, but the linebackers dropping way back, and Martin had nowhere to run. The other situation was that Alabama was rushing, and when Martin came in front, he scored from 80 yards and then made another run of about 40 yards. But you see that the Alabama linebackers were right there to... It will be a good one, and it probably will be for the Super Bowl. On second down and seven, Wickersham pass down the middle. Martin again, he's got the hole, and he is dragged down at the 20. 19 seconds to play, LSU's going to kill the clock again. It's a first down at the Alabama 20. That's the best throw that Wickersham has made today. The, the most difficult throw is the deep 20-yard middle. Uh, pass where the safety man playing very deep and cautious allowed Martin to come in front of him and the ball was right on the target. LSU now will will have no more timeouts and Jeff Wickersham has become the all-time LSU seasonal passing leader with 1,861 yards and they've had some great ones here at LSU. Remember that folks like Jones I mean just going down through the years. Notice how deep Martin is on this pattern and also notice where the ball was. Good throw right on the target. Martin has tremendous speed, and he comes within just one step of maybe scoring. With no more time since his plays that uh, he's worked on in this situation, but he could throw in the end zone if he'd really worked on it. Oh, well, nice take it. Oh, well, they're going to kick it. He got it. It is good. Carter D. Juan Carlos Potenzo kicking off. Side kick. Nope. They just pop it up in the air. Short. Fair catch is called at the second fair catch of the kickoff we've had in the ball game by Alabama at the 22 with Preston Gothard, the tight end, dropping back and making the fair catch. So that's where the tide will get it at their 22 with 13 seconds to play in the first half. We seldom see a fair catch on the kickoff, but it is coached by most of the my friends in coaching, when you kick the ball deep across the field to someone who's not accustomed to, to uh, carrying the football, go ahead and fair catch it and line up with the ball secure. Well, it looks like Alabama's going to be content to go to the clubhouse leading by four points as they hand the ball off inside the good the running back and the clock will run out. And that's where we are at halftime. Alabama, 14, LSU, 10. Here. With Ray Perkins. Ray, I've got to ask you, it was a tough first half. First half of big plays. Now, you were one for seven on third down conversions. Was their success against your running game, the outside well, contained people? Well, their, their success on us, outside running game, has been just absolutely great. We knew that they had a fine football team and a fine defense, especially. No team this year has just run the football down the field on them and scored. They've done it with big plays. We haven't made that many big plays. We're going to have to make more of the second half. 
the, the, the name of the game in the first half of this ball game was a block punt and return for a touchdown by our defense. We said the big plays. Now, I know you're proud of your freshman, especially on defense. Wayne Davis hurt his knee. Have you gotten a word on him? Will he be back? No, I haven't. I hope to get one, a word on him before the second half. I, cer I certainly hope it's not bad, and I certainly hope he can come back the second half. Good luck the second Thank half, you. Coach. Okay, we will... The second half is on the way now as Alabama kicks off for LSU. Fontenot fumbles the football, and then he is stuck right at the 15-yard line, and that's where LSU will start. And they start on a shaky note. The Alabama defensive lines up with John Hand, defensive tackle, a big guy out of Sylacauga. Mike Rodriguez started in there. Kurt Jarvis playing some at nose guard. Randy Edwards who's going to come out of there with four letters. Cornelius Bennett, the young man who made the big play for them in the first half. Emmanuel King played very well. Wayne Davis had a hurt leg and may not play more today. And Scott McCray, the other inside linebacker. So it's first down and 10 for LSU now as they send Dalton Hilliard in motion and Wickersham will put it in the air and he throws it behind Herman Fontenot. Wickersham. Looked like Ricochet again uh, slipped off his back foot that time and couldn't get the zip on the ball where he wanted it. Stan Gay, a cornerback for Alabama, out of Tuskegee, 175 pounder. Sammy Hood was burned on that long touchdown play, 175 pounder. Ricky Thomas is a freshman, 185 pounds. Britton Cooper is another freshman at 175 pounds. Not too big, but they're very quick and combative. On second and ten, Ricochet getting some pressure from King. Now gets his pass away and uh, pretty much throws it away. Junius Durrell was in that general area over there, but he really had no chance to catch it. And we've got Ricochet hurt on the play and down on the field. The LSU quarterback right now is on the field, hurt, rolling around and twisting in some pain. And uh, everybody on the LSU side of the field is, is holding their breath. For two reasons. One, they want Wickersham back in the ball game, and that from center first has to be extremely careful. So a little pressure right here on Doug Powell. Handles it all right, gives it to Hilliard, but Hilliard is hit behind the line of scrimmage by John Hand now, who's made two big plays. A big sophomore from Sylacauga, and Big Al jumping up and down on the sidelines. And LSU now sends out Clay Parker to punt out of the end zone area which means the tide for their first snap of the second half is going to have pretty good field position if Richardson handles it all right. Just starting the second half of play. Richardson needs part of that the snap is good. There's no pressure. The kick is out of there. and Not particularly long kick, but it does take an LSU bounce at midfield and kicks out of bounds at the Alabama Court of its own 48. Leading 14 to 10. They send Good in motion. Give it to Ricky Moore, the fullback. He gets a good block on that side and turns it upfield. Number 62, John McIntosh, took out two, if not three, Tigers from his uh, pulling guard position. You see it here on the right side of the picture. Ricky Moore is the leading ball carrier for Alabama. Both his freshman and sophomore years. He's leading right now. Number 62, as Keith described, McIntosh, the pulling guard, was an offensive center until two weeks ago. And you can see just how strong and powerful Ricky Moore is. Takes three or four to get him down. He got a first down on the carry at the LSU 39. <laughs> Lewis the throw. Pops it down the middle to Gothard, the tight end. He makes the grab at the LSU 32. And here's a look at the Tiger secondary. Alex Clark, 195-pound senior. Eugene Daniel, a 5'11", 180-pound senior. Jeffrey Dale is a 215-pound junior strong safety. And Lifford Hopley is a 200-pound junior at free safety. They're big in that secondary LSU. Are. Very big. Second down, three Alabama, LSU 32. Moore up the middle. Had a big hole. So what they were not particularly able to do with efficiency in the first half, they come out here in the second half, look like they're determined to run the football. Be the offensive unit there for Alabama. Keith, on your point, I, I think that the coaches would go in and say, men, we're going to have to run the football if we're going to win this game. We can't just rely entirely on the pass, and that's what they're showing. 
They've got the first down at the LSU 24. Lewis goes back to the air with it. And he gets away with it. He forced it to Gothard to tie it in between two defenders. But the freshman comes up with a good catch. He shows the quick arm of Lewis backing up in the pro style offense, something he'd never done before this year. He's going to throw the ball in the area between the two linebackers, and it's right on the target, down low, where the tight end Gothard could cradle it in. It's second down, two, ball at the 16 of LSU. And Terry Good, the freshman, bangs into the stack, and I think he's got a first down. For a 175, 170-pounder, he seems to hit in there with a good deal of authority. His coaches told me yesterday that Good can start uh, and be going full speed at the end of one step. Now, we've heard that all the time, and I have, uh, have my doubts, but they say he can. He's just got tremendous acceleration. First down at the LSU 13. Lewis on an up. And Walter is over the 10 to about the 9. Ray Perkins now on his side. Trying to wish that ball in the end zone. Help guide it in there. If Alabama does score here on the first possession of the second half, it's going to make LSU's mountain pretty high. Going back to Ray Perkins, uh, in my judgment, he was there to call it all the way. A lot like there, tough, mentally. Inside the 10, second down. Six. Six and a half. Lewis gets it away under some pressure. The quick delivery is good to Gothard. Down around the seven. Right now, let's check in with Tim Brent. Chief Jeff Wickersham is behind me. He had the wind knocked at him. You were absolutely correct. He is wearing a flak jacket. He said he got hit under that and just had the breath taken away from him. He's fine. He's loosened up. He's going back in the ball game. That's good news, Jimmy. Thank you. Just inside the eight now of LSU, it is third down. And it's about four and a half yards to keep it. LSU did not rush in their circumstances earlier and got a touchdown thrown on them. Let's see what happens. They're not rushing now either. And Lewis throws a bad pass. He tried to swing it out to Ricky Moore and in his haste, simply threw a bad pass. And so it brings up fourth down and brings Van Tippett onto the field, the place kicker for Alabama. On field goals this year, he is 11 of 18. He missed from 47 yards in the first half. It's pretty easy for anybody to miss from 47 yards. This one, spot goes down at the 15, at the 25 yards. He had two footballs on the field. The one that was incomplete was still laying over on the side. The referee had to go, excuse me, the headlines and had to go pick it up. Malcolm Simmons, the punter, will hold it for Van Tippen. Plenty of leg, and he nailed it. So Alabama gets a field goal out of its first possession on the 25-yarder and jumps into a seven-point lead of 17 to 10. We move along now with Alabama's Terry Sanders kicking off. Fontenot and Jefferson are the beat people. 17 to 10 Alabama lead. It goes to Fontenot at the two. As a whole, one man, one man, and he couldn't get by him. Boy, oh boy, did he almost go home with that one. Freddie Robinson, cornerback, pulled him down. Herman Fontenot makes a great return on this. He just finds a little bit of a creep. This is what you like in a, a return kicker, kickoff man. He sees the creep, he doesn't hesitate. Watch him give a little juke right here and uh, nearly gets by. He slows down, it slows him down just enough for Robinson to make the play. At the 45 for LSU. Give the ball to Lang, the fullback. He's got no place to go. Number 96. Randy Edwards. I think I should point out that the team that kicked off the beginning of the second half scored first, Keith. That's my old theory. <laughs> I got to put that in. <coughs> Rick 
Beecham is back now. He comes back on the field, having been deflated on the last possession, but he's moving freely and seems all right. Second down, nine. And Jeff back to throw it. Quick one. It's good to James, and James is short of a first down at the Alabama 47. He's two yards short of the first down. Third coming up. We talked about earlier that Alabama, with five and now four freshmen playing irregularly, are not using any dramatic or extreme style of play on defense. Very basic, so they can avoid mistakes. Third and a long two, Wickersham chooses to throw, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Intended for his tight end, Mitch Andrews, and Cornelius Bennett slapped it down. How many, oh, that big freshman's having a day. How many big plays has Cornelius been, been in today? Watch him to the right of your screen. He's standing up, he's 6'4", and he jumps up just to the right of your screen and knocks the ball down. The tight end, uh, Andrews, was wide open. It wasn't uh, Bennett either. It was Randy Edwards who did it. Randy Edwards, 96. Oh, they don't get a piece of the ball, and you've got a rough in the kicker call. Randy Edwards came flying through there. He did not get the ball. I thought he was going to block it. He did not get it. It's an absolutely marvelous kick that goes out of bounds on the one-yard line in the far corner, but it's a rough in the kicker call against Alabama. Watch this, fans. Edwards, number 96, instead of going in front of the kicker, he goes for the kicker, which is a thing that you try to avoid when you try to block the kick. You go in front of the kicker, out in his leg, and he would have blocked it without roughing the kicker. we have got to get a piece of the ball, and he did not. You saw that the official stood there and took a good look, and he didn't hear anything, and he didn't see anything, and out came the old yellow rag. Keith, I think we should mention right here that LSU's got some problems with their protection, that they better get over on the sideline and, and get it straightened out before they have to punt the next time. That would scare me if I had uh, that happen to me for the second time in one ball game. It gives LSU a first down at the Alabama 33. And they give it to Hilliard. And Hilliard trying to go outside, can't do it. Fumbles the football. I think Alabama possibly might have it. A lot of white shirts storming around it. 34, Ricky Thomas, the strong safety, came up. I'm going to tell you, Hilliard had a great effort to get that ball back because there were three white shirts all around it. Shows his quickness. He's stumbling as he goes down on the quick pitch, his favorite play. Somehow he loses his footing. It seemed to me like right in there, yes. He begins to lose his footing. The ball is popped out, knocked out by Thomas. Uh, number 34, three or four uh, Alabama players are fighting over the ball, and Hitchett gets up and covers. I don't know why in the world Philip Brown didn't just cover it up. He's trying to grab a hold of it, trying to pick it up instead of uh, covering it. He's another one of those freshmen that are playing. Wickersham's pass goes down the middle incomplete, intended for Junius Doral. Thrown low and a little behind him. That brings up third down and 12 from the 35. Here are the total yards. Alabama 209, LSU 269. I thought at the beginning of this ball game that the, both offenses were superior to either defense. That we might have a good offensive show. 70,606. That is well off the pace of attendance at Tiger Stadium. That goes Wickersham on third and 12. Runs away from the pressure. Gets a little help on the sidelines, and he comes up short of the first down. I don't think he made it by a yard or two. He's got about three yards, Keith. Three yards. So that'll probably get Batanzos in the ball game, and here he comes. One comes on. Alabama defense did a marvelous job of covering all of LSU's receivers. Wickersham had plenty of time, but couldn't find anybody open. Normally, after you scramble, somebody gets open, but they didn't. Batanzos will be going from 42 yards with the kick. He hit a 36-yarder in the closing seconds of the first half. So this is a 42-yard kick. Mackey gets the snap, gets it down. The kick is away. High. No. Right side. Didn't pull it back in. So the ball got out to the right, stayed right, and he missed it. 
First down from the 26 for Alabama. Up the middle comes Ricky Moore. All the way to the 41. First down for the Tide. And that looked easy. Billy Neighbors, the offensive center, made a sensational block. He's the son, number 54. He is the son of the All-American uh, neighbors uh, that played at Alabama in 1961 on their championship team. You can see the block sprung more into the secondary for the big play. Wes is a redshirt freshman at Alabama. First down. They put it on the 40 for the Tide. And Lewis now looks. Gets a good block to stay on his feet. And turns it into a game. You know who was the policeman over there for uh, Walter Lewis? Number 70, Gary Ott was, uh, was on patrol duty, and Lewis would have been nailed had Ott not been there. We often talk about, uh, as we look at the Iowa-Wisconsin score, Michigan continues to run away with it. We talk about a scrambling quarterback. Lewis is more than a scrambling quarterback. He is a runner with that football. Four, five, speed. Second down and a yard. Just short of midfield. Lewis has still got it. Now goes outside with it to carry good, and good gets a first down for Alabama at the LSU 43. Now Alabama starting to take over the line of scrimmage. Alabama offensive line has two three-year starters in Adcock and Vickers. Rest of them are young. Holy Cross is, I think, they won nine straight this year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 77 points last week. Harvard's giving him a hard time. Lewis back on first down. Had a man right in his face. Delivers the pass. Pass is no good. Intended for good. Radel Melanson literally was uh, in Walter Lewis's face when uh, Walter let it go, and he almost completed it. Number 99. He's the big playmaker for uh, LSU. He's the one that they turn loose, wanting to rush the pass. All Southeastern Conference last year. See him jump up and uh, force the quickest throw goes incomplete. Second down and ten. Blindside pressure. Again, they pick off the pressure, but finally they get Lewis. Finally get him. Number four was whistling around the corner. The strong safety. Jeffrey Dale, I mean, he was lazy. About to take Walter Lewis's head off. Watch 54 West Neighbors come back and pick him up. Neighbors is the center, has no one to block. Right and she said he makes a great block by pushing Dale by, but still the people uh, rushing keep their lanes there and sack him for the loss. Norman Jefferson finally brought him down. Second sack of Lewis today. Third down and 15. You sack Lewis, it's a victory. That's one you go home and mark on the wall. Walter back to throw it on third and long. Gets it away. It's intercepted. It is picked off by number 35, Eugene Daniel. And he's back across the 40. Tried to force one too many. But from the end zone, watch Daniel number 35 break on the ball. The secret of pass coverage is breaking on the ball. He comes right up in front of it. Pulls it off for the interception, giving LSU a 5-0-3 to play in the third quarter. Ricochet, the quarterback. Gary James and uh, Craig Rapkin are the setbacks. Ricochet trying to set up the screen for James. He gets one block. He gets across the 45 and up to the 47 of LSU. Right now, here's Jim Lampert. Number seven against number three at Auburn. In the second quarter, Auburn has broken the ice to touchdown on a seven-yard pass from Randy Campbell to Chris Woods. Set up when a Maryland interception was nullified earlier in the drive on a roughing the passer call. Seven-nothing Auburn, Keith. Jimmy, 47 of LSU. It is second down, five. They recovered from a five-yard penalty. And uh, Wickersham is going to be called down. He went down on a knee before he threw the ball, and they're going to mark him down, and that'll go as a sack back at the 40, uh, 39. Randy Edwards. 
Well, you heard that Auburn was leading Maryland by a score of seven to nothing, and you're going to get a chance to see the Auburn Tigers next Saturday here on ABC at 3:30 Eastern Time in many areas of the country as they take on the Georgia Bulldogs in the big, big ball game in the Southeastern Conference for 1983. At least one of the big ball games. Auburn still got to play Alabama December 3rd, which you will also see on ABC. It is third down and about 13. Wickersham being sacked for the fourth time. Almost fell down. Gets the ball away quickly to James, but uh, Cornelius Bennett comes up and lays a lick on Gary just as the ball arrives, and so LSU's got to punt it away. So the Tiger offense are ineffective in this particular possession. And in to do the punting is Clay Parker. And if I was Clay Parker, I would kick the ball a little bit faster. Alabama has loaded up on one side or the other, blocked one, and nearly blocked the second. I'd catch it and kick it. Three stepper. One, two, three. Got it out of there a little quicker. He did. He gets a good tight spin on it. Carries well into that light breeze. Back to the pin goes Richardson. And LSU ought to get him pretty deep back there, and they do. Up around the 15. Running him down with Alex Clark, a cornerback. at 2-5-3 to play in the third quarter. And Alabama leading by a score of 17 to 10. Ricky Moore has uh, only carried the ball nine times so far in the ball game. He's carried three times here in the second half for 37 yards, and he's got it for the fourth time. And he's gang tackled, but he is so big and so strong, uh, once five people get a hold of him, they just get a free ride for about four yards. West Virginia trying to shake off successive losses and to come back with a win, and Penn State leading Brown with Ohio State. Probable bowl team there. Winning again today. Second down and six from the 20 for Alabama. That's Lenny Patrick in motion. And Moore. See him? Oh, I tell you, he's a truck and a half. Ricky weighs 240 pounds, and he stands only six feet tall, so there's not much room to get in to make the tackle number 26 was a, had a fine uh, year as a freshman ended up leading the ball team and, and rushing both years freshman and sophomore and now he leads this year 11 rushes for 63 yards do 10 for 50. first down alabama out near the 27. they lead by seven points and this is lenny Patrick carrying and LSU saws him down pretty well, diving in there and locking his legs with Sean Burks, the inside linebacker from Baton Rouge. LSU defense continues to play a very conservative style, but I think what they should do, and that's the way they should do when they, uh, when they play Alabama. Very conservative. Don't take chances. They've got too many big play people on that offensive unit. Well, got a whole quarter to play, and you're only down by seven. Won't get too wild at this point, I wouldn't think. It's second down and nine. Close to the 28, and Lewis straight back. He's looking for Jones, and he throws the short man as uh, Clark took Jones away from him. And the fast completion to uh, Preston Gothard is well short of the first down. And now, let's see. It'll be third down. The LSU's done a good job of taking Joey Jones who's receiving out of the Alabama offense. He's the leading receiver, 28 receptions for a 15-yard average, and I don't believe he's caught a pass. Mike Adcock, uh, the veteran guard, uh, left side, leaves the lineup. That brings Mark Jackson in. That spot, number 55. On third down and a long six. Lewis. Gets it away on a swing to Moore. And they've got him. Back at the original line of scrimmage. Number 57, Sean Burke. Made a fine play there. And Alabama will have to go to the front with 15 seconds to play in the third quarter and only a seven-point difference. Good series for the LSU defense. They needed to stop Alabama and force the kick and get some kind of field position where they can use their offense. And the third quarter is over before they get the ball away. Back after this word, good day. Gets a beauty out of there. High hanger with enough spin on it to penetrate the wind. And the ball is knocked out of bounds by the deep man, Norman Jefferson. So LSU will start at their own 15 after a 57-yard punt. Here's Jim Lemp. 
Another look at Auburn, Keith. You know about the speed of Lionel James and Bo Jackson. Well, here's the red shirt freshman fullback, Tommy Agee. And if you have to stop the other two, maybe you have trouble with him. 61 yards on display in the second quarter. Auburn stretching their lead over Maryland now to 14-0. Back to Keith Jackson. Yeah, they're tough. They really are. LSU now trying to get something going. Give it a dog and hit your head. wiggles around and gets four yards out to the 19. And here are statistics for three quarters of play. Alabama continues to gain in the yardage, ending up with 251 to 291. But the critical mistakes in the ball game by LSU, two fumbles when they were threatening and a block kick, have been the difference. Second down and six from the 20. Got to go back to that mark. Here he goes down to a sideline pattern this time. Throws it to him, and it is intercepted. Intercepted. He tried to force it to Martin. Martin, instead of coming into the middle, went to the outside, and Stan Gay gets into a wrestling match and comes away with the ball. The only starter on Alabama's secondary returning, number 28, Gay, breaks on the ball beautifully. He times it as Wickersham tipped off where he was going to throw. Gay, number 28, comes in, juggles the ball momentarily, but pulls it down, legal in interception, has control of it in bounds. Now Alabama is given an opportunity on that turnover, the 14th interception of Wickersham this year. They've got a chance to make the door heavy. From the LSU 32, first down, and Lewis goes down the line with the option, turns it inside himself and takes a pretty good wallop. From Ricky Chapman, the inside linebacker, but he picked up about five yards. Another reason, Come if you on. look at Stan Gay, that was you, a brilliant interception that he made. Another reason you don't want to blitz Alabama is the threat of the option play. It forces you to play more basic defenses because they could get outside for the big play. Don't give him five, give him four. Second down and six. Come back this way with it, which comes right around in the middle, and he's close to a first down. Stovall, his team has played 50. exceptionally well today, except for the turnover. Big, play, Big ball Big game for him. He's had Come some heat on him by the Tiger fans. Makes it tough on a coach preparing his team. Third down at about a half a yard. And the wide receivers, Jones and Bendross, have gone out, and uh, Alabama comes up now with a double tight end alignment. They've got Thornton Chandler in there. And they wedge it out and get the first down. ABC's Monday Night Football, coming up next Monday, features the New York Giants and the Detroit Lions. And it's 9 o'clock Eastern time. Detroit. As Frank mentioned earlier, getting Billy Sims back in good health. Now they can keep their quarterbacks healthy. Might make a move in that central division. The Giants have been having their problem. First down from the 18. And that's Ricky Moore. Frank, I don't know. If I had a big old horse like that, and I know a lot of coaches probably feel the same way, if you've got a guy that's that durable and that tough and that strong and that quick, I might, uh, like John McKay said, uh, let him carry it a few times. It ain't heavy. Particularly on this part of the field when you want to make four yards and keep the chains moving and go ahead by two touchdowns. But this is a perfect illustration of why big, strong legs make a difference. Watch him. He gets low and goes over for the nice game. It's up four yards right through the middle of the traffic. He's got some more. See him bounce off that stack and then just keep on chunking. Go right down to the five-yard line where it's first down and goal to go for Alabama. They've what got a, eight first downs of the second half on all of them on the ground. What an asset it is to have that big fullback punishing the defense right in this part of the field, setting up a good first and five. First and goal from the five for the Tide. 11.45 to play. LSU. Being undone today by big play, more than uh, on, uh, mistakes on their part. One of them turning into a big play touchdown for Alabama. Lewis gives it to Moore again. This time the Tigers stag him up. Number 73, Eric Kiddock, leading the defensive surge. When the defensive lineman submarine on the goal line, the tight end really has to get down and make a good block. He didn't do it, and Kiddock came into the 
backfield and uh, tackling for a loss. Loss of two. Second down and goal. All of that near the seven. Walter Lewis looking, got a man in the end zone, and it's batted away. Number 37, Ricky Chapman, slapped it down. He had uh, Jay Grogan tied in from Crapwell, Alabama, in the end zone, and uh, Chapman just stepped in and slapped it down. East Carolina, you know, the only two losses East Carolina's had this year were to Florida and Florida State. Won a big victory over Missouri uh, early in the year also. He did. Alabama now has called a timeout. They want to talk things over with third down and goal from the LSU 7 and 10.50 to play in the football game, and Alabama leading by 7. Get their defensive unit straightened out. So it's third down and goal now for Alabama from the Tiger 7. Good and more. Backfield, Jones in motion, Lewis back to throw, and he's got some pressure. Gets it off! No, 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 he's off. I thought he was out of bounds. Let me see. He had one foot down, Joey Jones. That little rascal has made some great catches in his college career. I remember one a couple of years ago that was astounding. And this one may fit right in that category. And I think he just barely got one tiptoe down on the very back of the end zone. The rule says that he must have possession and control the ball at one foot in bounds at the same time. Very close. We'll take a look at it. Right now, Van Tiffin is in for the extra point try to make it a 14-point lead. It's up, and it's good. And you've got 10.42 to play in the football game as Jones comes up with his first catch of the afternoon. And it was a dandy. Let's watch number four, Joey Jones, the leading receiver for Alabama. He's going to get in the back part of the end zone. And that's the best place to get when the quarterback is scrambling. Now, remember, he's got to have possession of the ball. You can see the white line behind the dark line. Now he has the ball. Oh, yeah, he's clearly in. <laughs> He's something, isn't he? He really is. <laughs> That's just sensational. And on the part of Walter Lewis, also his scrambling ability, being able to rifle the ball in at the last minute without much uh, body. Well, if you can't get pressure on Lewis like that, give him that much time with his arm, I tell you, it's <laughs> difficult. Just brutal. It's very difficult to defend. Eight plays. Oh, the one of the smallest men on the field makes a big play for Alabama. The tide kicks it off. The ball goes to Norman Jefferson. Comes across the 10. Gets a hole. Breaks it out into the open. He may be gone. Number 21's got a shot at him and he gets it. At Robinson. Freddie Robinson ran him down. It was Freddie Robinson that saved the touchdown a while ago in the third quarter when Faulkner almost broke the kickoff re return. Jefferson is just a freshman. He had 157 yards in return last week alone. But he gets a good crease right here. And now watch him turn on his speed, give a little juke uh, to one Alabama defender. Finally, Robinson, number 21, I guess is going to finally run him down. But not before LSU is threatened. That's something that they really need. They're down on the Alabama 29. Give the ball to Gary James, and uh, he has contact at the line of scrimmage. Tries to cut away from Mike Rodriguez and can't do it. One thing that I've, I've noticed as we look at Jefferson, number eight, is that the LSU players, ball carriers, have been slipping a lot today, Steve. I thought James lost his footing on that last play where he had a chance to make a good game. Well, it's an old Bermuda grass field. Roots are deep, normally an outstanding turf, but it was softened by a lot of rain yesterday. There's a pass that is complete to Martin, and Eric Martin makes another big play for the Tigers. And that... That's only just about the fourth time they have made that work over the middle. And this one goes inside the 15. One of those kind of plays went for 80 yards. Exactly the same play. Underneath pattern, the linebackers now have to play Billy Pierce and uh, McRae missing number 14 Pierce and 45 McRae. So LSU comes right back with nine minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game. Ricochet giving, getting some jump, runs out of time. 
Alabama secondary people did a good job that time, and uh, Gary James is all tied up over here. And now let's check in again with Jim Lampley. Two scores worth reporting. East Carolina leading Miami 7 0 in the second quarter on an Ingram Devan touchdown pass. And in Chapel Hill, Clemson may be headed for its 18th straight win against ACC opposition, leading North Carolina 13 3. LSU, second down and 12. Wickersham back, gets it off. Pass is complete to Lang, the fullback, and Lang is to the 10. And that's as far as he's going to go. Edwards, 96, among those making the tackle. If we look at Ray Perkins, who's a little bit worried, but I want to go back to that call on second down and long. The screen pass was beautifully set up. They got 10 of the 15 yards back they needed for the first down. Now they have two tries for five yards in the first down. covering passes over the middle Martin touchdown great catch by Martin what a play quick to sham holds the ball until Martin finally gets open and he drills a bullet watch Martin go in the air with those soft hands and pull it in and step into the end zone for a touchdown. Eric has now caught seven on the day for 175 yards and two touchdowns. Well, LSU coaches said they had to get Martin the ball somewhere between seven and ten times if they were going to win. They can still reach the ten. They're going for two. Ricochet back. Looking over the middle. Goes for Martin again. Penalty flag. You've got to get a call there on Alabama. They had Martin wrapped up. I mean, there was no way Alabama people were going to let uh, Martin come in and get that pass. Sammy Hood just locked him up. And there were two pass interferences on the play. They were holding up uh, James coming out of the backfield, too. James was being tackled by number, I guess it was uh, maybe Bennett, 96. I couldn't tell. Edwards or Bennett won. They're showing holding. And now LSU, you've got your choice of holding calls here. Yes, now LSU can go from the one and a half yard line. That makes a little difference. Half the distance to the goal line. I'm sorry, they put it on the one yard line. One. Put on the they one. put it on the one. Martin I, has come out now. Martin is out of the lineup. Pass interference in the end zone. Should now he's going. Keith, I believe he's going to penalize half the distance, and that's not accurate. Well, he called holding. The call was holding. Yeah, but the pass was thrown. I believe they missed it. I believe. We've got holding. Half a distance to the goal. That's a defense. That's a definite mistake. And, and the first down. ball should be out there. If the ball, the LSU coaches are yelling at him. If the ball had not been thrown, the ball, he, the official is exactly right. But once the ball was thrown, it's pass interference. And the ball would be on the one yard line instead of the one and a half. What a showing run. Nope, Wickersham's pass looped out, caught, and good to Gene Lang. The console to kick it off. He hasn't kicked it to Joe Carter all day. And he isn't going to this time. They pop it up in the air, and a fair catch is called. And it's a good call by Paul Field. Paul Fields, the quarterback, was up on the front line because uh, Ray Perkins and the Alabama coaching staff, I think, sort of sensed that LSU might try onside. They pop it up in the air, and Fields, a quarterback, makes the fair catch. Three Re times in the ball game. <laughs> the reason it. you fair catch is you don't want to get hit and have the ball knocked loose. When you fair catch, you agree not to return the ball. Therefore, the defense cannot tackle Alabama's well up the field now at the 37. Where they go to work with Ricky Moore and a big hole over the left side. And the tackle is made by John Fritchie, inside linebacker of a senior out of Baton Rouge. Doug Vickers and John McIntosh blocked beautifully on that last sweep, and they needed to make a big play. Alabama needs to move the ball. Six points is a psychological uh, effect on both teams. LSU thinking they can win, Alabama thinking they can lose. Six points makes a difference. Second down about two and a half from the 45. Give it a more. And he really turned.
turned it on once he got past the line of scrimmage and moves his way to the 37 of LSU and a first down where Hopley made the tackle. Neighbors, number 54, is going to block Harvey all the way across the field and opening up this big hole as, as Doug Vickers comes in and makes a good block. Finally, Moore gets brought down by Hopley, number 29. Moore has 100 yards now on 16 carries, picked up 84 in the second half. And first down tied. Lewis on first down. Swings it out to Moore. Gets a block from Neighbors, the center, and goes for about eight yards. Well, that Neighbors has all of a sudden jumped into the picture, hasn't he? He really laid a lick on Vidal Melanson. Not any cripple. He was blocking. That Melanson is all conference and uh, an outstanding player. Melanson was number 99. He's dropping off perfect position to play the screen, but watch this block. Wes Neighbors, the son of all American Billy Neighbors, knocks it back, allows the extra yardage. And they go back to Goode, pops it over the right side, headed for the corner, and jumped out of bounds by number four, Jeffrey Dayo. And the freshman bullet almost broke it. That's why the young freshman is in the lineup. What a acceleration he has on this particular play. Gets bumped just a little bit right in here. Makes a cut. Daniel misses him right there, number 35, and now he does accelerate. Jeffrey Dale, their fine, fine defensive safety, knocks him out of bounds. Field goal here will be like a touchdown for Alabama, too. First down and goal to go from the LSU six. And it's Ricky Moore. Down to the two at least. Perfect illustration of power. Strong legs as we look at Ray Perkins. Feeling pretty good right now if he can get it in that end zone. But Moore made a determined run. Had very little blocking and picked up four yards, strictly on his own ability. Got it down to the one, Frank. He picked up five. Five yards, right. He's about as strong a fullback as we've seen this year. I believe he is, Keith. Of course, at 240 and six feet tall, that's a uh, strong, strong ball there. Good over the top touchdown. They took the ball and stuck it in the end zone after LSU made a ball game out of it. Watch Goose go over the top. The best play on the goal line when you hand it back seven yards. You got an athlete like this. He leaps over the top, gets his head, shoulders turned down, falls in the end zone for the touchdown. Now it's a 12-point Alabama lead with 6.02 to play. Very, very impressive by the offensive line. They're thinking, too. Lewis calls timeout. So Walter wanted to make sure he got everything organized because Alabama's thinking about going for two with 6.02 to play. Chevy Top taking charge. Earth. So they will try to make it a 14-point lead. Where they've been running up and down the field with it, who knows what may happen. This might be very big for Alabama. And goal, LSU. Then Boston Jones to the left. They go the other way with it. Give it to Moore, that big fullback, and LSU. He got it. Ricky Moore with a third effort gets the two points. That's, as Keith said, that's just second, third, fourth effort, whatever. And power, let's watch the right of your screen. You be the judge. It's very close. And only that second or third effort by Moore, number 26, handoff, gets hit right there. He's not across. He is not across at that time. Look at his strike, fight. Yes, he was. Officially called him across. All he has to do is penetrate the plane, imaginary line, upward from the goal line. The ball is the only thing that has to penetrate the plane. From this angle, you can see Burks, number 57, hit him. And uh, Moore keeps stretching, and there he held the ball. He, he stuck the ball out underneath and broke the play. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's a dangerous place to do it, but he got away with it. And it's a 32 to 18 ball game. Boy, he, he, he's happy. He's strong. He's a strong fellow. LSU has had 150 yards in uh, kick returns, kick kickoff returns. This time it's Fontenot. 
still got very good return yardage on it. Alabama's kick coverage has not been scintillating. Right now, let's join Jim Lampley for a moment. Keith, number one, Nebraska is at it again. Two touchdowns in 12 seconds. Five minutes into the game, Rozier scored on a five-yard run. Fumble on the kickoff, recovered by the Huskers. Gill to frame for 27 yards. 14-0 Nebraska already. Back to Keith Jackson. Well, they can do a tattoo on you in no time at all, can't they? Got so many people that can score in so many different ways. First down for LSU, Wickersham back. Has no pressure. Goes deep with it, and it's overthrown. Intended for Herman Fontenot. He had double coverage. ABC's Wide World of Sports coming up at 5 today. Eastern Time, 2 out on the West Coast, Pacific Standard Time. Michael Lee of Great Britain, Billy Sanders of Australia, Egon Mueller of West Germany. You got Californians uh, Lance King and Dennis Segalo competing in the World Speedway Motorcycle Championship. Of course, the World Gymnastics and the Dublin Mile, which will come into the satellite in Dublin, Ireland. Junius Duran now, and Eric Martin are the wide people. On second and ten, passes away, goes to Rapkin, the fullback, and Rapkin finds some room, crosses midfield, and goes to the Alabama 48 with five minutes and 39 seconds to play in the game. When you double cover the wide receivers, you go to your fullback or you tie it in. This play, they go to their fullback with a little screen, Alabama trying to get back, knowing that uh, Wickersham can only throw the ball. They don't have time to, to run the football. Good blocking by the offensive lineman, sets him up, and he makes the first down. Wickersham hit just as he threw the ball. And I mean Wallace by Emmanuel King. Emmanuel King has nine sacks already this year. Lewis Campbell, the defensive backfield coach, told me when Emmanuel gets pressure on the passer, we win. And Clemson. Clemson, pretty good football team. You don't see any of them because they're on probation. But uh, look at Hayden Fry in Wisconsin. Yep, with an hour. Michigan. Second down, 10 Tigers. Bama, 48. and brought down again by Emmanuel King and that is the sixth sack of the LSU quarterback today give credit again to the pass defense the coverage was good Alabama had four men rushing and Wilkerson had plenty of time if you found somebody open usually you spread that defense you got to have somebody underneath to, to for him to dump the ball off to if the deep men are covered all the receivers went deep and nobody short Georgia and Auburn undefeated in the conference. Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee all have one loss in SEC play. So this is a very big ball game for Alabama. They stay very much in the hunt. But they get to play Auburn the 3rd of December. This time he finds the tight end, Mitch Andrews. And Andrews gets it back across midfield and down to about the Alabama 45. So here uh, they've got to go now on fourth down. It'll be fourth and long. They'll lead at least eight yards. They have no choice but to go on fourth down, trailing by 14 points, with coming upon four minutes to play. I think that uh, Wickersham, uh, in his first two calls going deep, was uh, very risky. He needed to get it in bunches of eight and ten and not go in one play. Fourth and eight. Down the middle, good to Martin. Eric Martin is inside the 15. Down at the 12. 3.55 to play in the game. When your linebackers do not drop deep, you've got to continue to hit the split in coming across the middle. The linebackers were occupied by the backs coming out of the backfield, but once again, Wickersham's right on target to Martin. Now watch him go right here. 43 Hood was lucky to get him down. They put him on the 13, where it's a first down for LSU. Keith, when we said earlier that both offenses seem to be stronger than either defense, I think we were accurate. Pass is thrown short at the nine. Caught by Dalton Hilliard, fell down. He did fall down. He could have caught the ball and turned downfield and picked up extra yards, except the pass was so low he had to cradle it in. Wickersham now, 19 out of 31 for 300, 312 yards, and that is a new LSU single-game passing record. Alabama defense, a young, 
playing four and five freshmen. LSU taking advantage of it. Ricochet's only a sophomore. He's going to be around for a while. He pops it down the middle on the ricochet. Pop. Touchdown by Mitch Andrews. Now they got to go for two again, Pete. Yep. the play again watch the deflection the old tip drill the receivers coach always go through this in practice where one man tips it now he has to react Nick Andrews number 83 cradles it in for the touchdown 257 to play in the game Tigers going for two here's Hillier throwing it back across the wicker sham and he's in there Picks it to Hilliard, Hilliard back to the quarterback, and it's again a six-point ball game. So they still bleed on the purple and gold side. They've got a shot at it with 2.57 to play. All right, children, who's going to be the first one to recite the alphabet? How about you, Anne? A, B, C, D, E. Punt. I believe I would go for the onside kick and take my chances on that play. That's what he's going to do. All the receivers up there for Alabama, backs and receivers, and it was Jesse Bendross who took it, caught it, and rolled over with it, and Alabama controls it at their own 47-yard line. LSU's fourth drive. Eight plays, 65 yards. Andrews making a sensational catch after deflected by the defensive linebacker. Well, the two fumbles by Wickersham are the two things that and the block punt. Those are really going to haunt them. And the fumbles were so unnecessary. One fumble was from the staff from Sunday and one after he picked up six yards. Figures Ricky Moore time, right? Yep. They jump on him pretty well. Hold him to about two yards. All time out. Well, they're going to let it go this time. Right, the they only got two. two left. Alabama wants to be very slow, very deliberate. Line up slow, come out of the huddle, and be sure they use as much of the 25 seconds as they possibly can. They're watching the clock. 32-26, the score. They're staying in the huddle as long as they can, watching the clock to see how long they can take. Walter Lewis watching it now, 8, 7, 6, Tap it on three. Lewis keeps it. Wedges for two or three yards. They'll be looking at third and about five now as they fight their way to the LSU side of the field to the Tiger 48. Now, LSU finally called timeout. Well, they had to do it there because there are two minutes and one second to play. Two minutes and one second. We had two uh, game records set today for LSU. Ball is at the 47. They put it down. Third down and five. Lewis back to throw, looking for Ben Gross, gets away from pressure. They're after him, and they're going to get him. Way back on Call, 35. Call timeout, quickly. Call timeout. Oh, they're not calling. They're wasting time. They're not thinking timeout. They're letting the clock go. Now they run up to call timeout. Wasted 12 seconds. They did. Running around, they were high-fiving each other when they wasted 12 seconds. They finally called timeout. Alabama's ball back on the 36th, 4th. Down. Six point game. That trying to get to the kicker and rush him, block it or something. But these days, uh, you can't rough him because if you get flagged on it, it becomes an automatic first down. So uh, keep that going to rush. That's the best chance to win the ball game is to block the kick uh, under these circumstances. So they've got 10 men up there right now. Better be careful. Feel some out of there to help to return. Jefferson is deep. Simmons hits a high hanger, and Jefferson can't get to it. And uh, Malcolm Simmons knocks it out of bounds, up around the 35, uh, 36 of LSU. It's only a 28-yard kick. There's a little breeze down there, and if you get it up without rotation, it isn't going to go very far. You've got a minute and 36 seconds now to play in the football game, and it's 32 Alabama, 26 LSU. LSU has no timeouts. 
meaning they're going to have to call the plays at the line of scrimmage if the clock is still running. Ricochet to throw it. Swings it out to Lane on a screen. Gets one, two, three blocks. Breaks it up the middle. Gets across midfield. That stops the clock. As they move the chains, and he goes down at the Alabama 48 with a minute and 28 seconds to play in the game. That play took a total of six seconds. They've got plenty of time. If they don't panic, they've got time to get down there. Steps away from the backside pressure, gets the pass off to Mitch Andrews, the tight end that is short of a first down. And the block will keep on rolling. Well, it stopped for a minute. Why did it stop? The some penalty. The referee, the uh, headline. Oh, we're over here on this side. The linesman has called a penalty. Away from the play, they're going to penalize LSU, even though it was a pass. It's offensive interference. Although on this side of the field, it has to be. Ural runs on the field, bringing in the play. The loss of down, too. No. Here's the call. No. No, it's not this. And then that will man downfield. Offensive team. It's lost of a down. Second down coming up. Boy, I, that is hard to believe. I'd like to see the on a little old short pass like that. I don't know how in the world the umpire or somebody called that. Well, that'd be a linesman because the flag was way over here on the LSU side. Well, Keith, the linemen were all dropping back in a cut protection. There was no way a lineman could have been downfield unless he lined up that way. Second down and 15. Rickensham throws it as far as he can for Durrell. And it's incomplete. He made a mistake. He had, uh, Rickensham had Martin wide open at the 20-yard line. He could have hit him and Martin could have scored with him. He went, watch Martin on this. All that Wicker Sam could think about was going for the ball. Watch how wide old Martin is in front. Look at him, wide open on the 35-yard line. He could have caught it, I believe, and nearly scored with it. Now it's third down. And 15. Passes away over the middle, tip. That incomplete intended this time for Martin, trying to go to the intermediate zone. And Jimmy Watts had dropped back in there and slapped it away. And there's the time remaining. But time right now is not so much all important as the down marker. It reads fourth down and 15 for LSU. Alabama's linebackers got extremely deep, and it was a good thing because they were back in the line of fire and knocked the pass down. He's got to try to get himself 15 yards, 15 and a half yards here. That's not an easy chore. Alabama defense dropping back, defending. He has to go short to Gary James, and James falls down way short of the first down, all the way out on the 47, and that might bring on the clicking of switches. I don't know why Wicker Sham would throw for the short man. He had men down deep. It was a three-level pass, one deep, one intermediate, and one short. I was at least taking my chances throwing the ball downfield. Three men, one deep, one intermediate, one short. He turns and throws it to the short man with a 15-yard gain to be made first down. Wicker Sham has gone over 2,000 yards for the season in this ball game as he threw for 343 today and three touchdowns. Alabama can fall on the ball and run the clock out without running, without trying to make a first down. LSU has no timeout remaining to stop the clock. Well, it was a spirited contest, to say the least, as the Tigers hung in there, and their own mistakes as much as anything did them in. And the young sophomore quarterback excelled uh, in some ways and then hurt his team with two fumbles uh, in the second quarter. That snap will do it. The ball game will end on that snap. And all they have to do now is let the seconds tick away. And Alabama has defeated LSU for the 32nd time in their series by a final score of 32 to 26.